Welcome to the FRA sustainability module. You need to take away two things from this module. You need to understand what sustainability is and you need to understand the dimensions of sustainability. So what is sustainability? Sustainability is basically the idea that we should operate without impairing our resource base. This is similar to the old idea of capital maintenance. That was a financial concept that said you don't have a profit unless your wealth at the end of the year is at least the same as it was at the beginning of the year. In other words, you have to make sure you are at least where you were at the beginning of the year before anything over and above that can be considered a profit. How is the definition of sustainability different from the definition of capital maintenance? It's different in two ways. We change the definition of us or our and we extend the concept beyond just a financial concept. So let's look at the definition of sustainability again. Sustainability is the use of resources, whether social, environmental or economic, in such a way that human needs can be met now, while also ensuring that those needs can be met in future. Notice what we've done here. We've changed the idea of resources or expanded the idea from just financial or economic to also include social and environmental resources. So there are three dimensions of resources that we're thinking about. The organization has a social impact, an environmental impact, and an economic impact. So we've changed the resources. We've also changed who we're thinking about. Previously we said without impairing our resources. Well if you're looking narrowly from the viewpoint of the organization, yes, our, we, are the shareholders or the owners or the employees. But we can take a broader look. We can look at those resources as having more stakeholders. So if we're talking about impairing or maintaining or sustaining the environment, the country, uh, the planet, uh, people in general, then the stakeholders need not just be direct financial stakeholders, but people who have a different stake in the organization. For example, our grandchildren. Do we leave them a planet that is better or worse off than the one we inherited? So, who we are when we say impairing our resources is different. And when we say resources, we're not just talking about financial resources. We're talking about financial or economic capital. We're talking about human or social capital. And we're talking about planetary resources or environmental capital. Now, that's all very well and good in theory. We should be sustainable and apple pie is good and fantastic. But does sustainability really happen? I mean, some people can argue that we can actually balance, we can achieve all of these three dimensions, that we can attain um, sustainability from a financial, environmental and social perspective. However, it can also be argued that unless the organization faces real costs, then this will not happen. If managers aren't being rewarded for being sustainable, whether that is through their key performance indicators or whether the organization bears a cost in exchange for doing a certain activity or a benefit, then managers will have no motivation to attain or to reach for sustainability. So if we believe that incentives, direct incentives, are what drive sustainability, then we can expect that some people will say, yes, sustainability is good and we'll try for it. Others will say, look, we really don't care. However, we do know that there is one reason that can motivate all people to be sustainable. And that's the concept of legitimacy. The idea that if society expects us to be sustainable, we're at least going to pretend to be sustainable. Or we might um, try to be sustainable, or we might try to pretend. So legitimacy is this idea that if you operate in a society or in an environment, the environment, the society essentially gives you a license to operate. It says, we're not going to criticize you um, we're not going to make your life hard so long as you meet our expectations. So there's this idea of the social contract. We'll be happy to have this factory in our city so long as it doesn't pollute our drinking water. 
that's the concept of license to operate. Now, legitimacy can be that sort of direct link, or it can be a vaguer, almost advertising, public relations link. So, what do we know about incentives? As a general rule, many organisations don't have clear incentives for organisations to target the environmental and social effects of their operations. Um, the Australian Emissions Trading Scheme was a way of trying to say, hey look, pollution is important to us, let's make organisations face the cost of pollution, and therefore because pollution is directly entering into the profit measure, managers will directly see an incentive for targeting that environmental outcome. However, as a general rule, for many of the things that people view as useful, environmental or valuable, environmentally or socially, there is an absence of institutional drivers or explicit costs or benefits or institutional clarity. So when we see sustainability, those of you who are cynical will probably say, hmm, when an organisation is pretending or saying it's sustainable, is it really genuinely committed to that? Or is it just doing it for public relations reasons? Is it doing it to legitimise the organisation in the eyes of society? Okay, so that's sustainability. Now let's link this to accounting. How does accounting and how do auditing come into this? Well, you may have heard of the accounting concept of the triple bottom line. And the triple bottom line is a reporting framework that tries to address these key three, three key dimensions of business activity where sustainability is viewed as being important. So economic performance is the easy one economic performance, sustainability economically can be assessed through either conventional financial reporting, reporting of numbers such as profit, conventional capital, or as slightly more advanced modes of reporting, such as reporting of economic value added. Not how much wealth have you generated for the owners, but how much wealth have you generated for society. The second dimension of business activity is environmental performance. It's really hard to say how organisations should report this because every organisation will have a different impact on the environment. Should we require every organisation to report how many chemicals it's discharged into the river? Well, that's okay for organisations that are next to a river, but if an organisation isn't discharging anything into a river, is that sort of reporting requirement simply extra paperwork, where somebody has to sit there for 10 minutes filling out zeros? Social performance is the third dimension of business activity that sustainability is concerned with and therefore the third part of the triple bottom line. Social performance is the impact of the organisation on people and that can really include two aspects. How are people who work or are engaged with the organisation treated um, and how, what does the organisation do for society in general. Now, just as accountants have tried to address the issues of sustainability with the triple bottom line, the auditors are also seeing a market opportunity here. Uh, some auditing researchers and some auditing organisations have said, look, we want to do assurance work, we want to verify compliance of organisations that claim that they're polluting a certain amount, more or less. So when an organisation says we've emitted 50 tonnes of carbon this year, Who's going to check that? The auditors argue that they have a role to play there. So auditing standard, set standard setting bodies in their framework include that type of assurance, but there aren't many assurance standards relating to that aspect just yet. So we've got this thing called triple bottom line reporting. I've been a little bit vague about where it comes from. Well, where does it come from? Well, it's a concept from the theory books. The reason that's pretty useless is because anybody can interpret triple bottom line a different way. Now, if an organisation is genuine, it will report what its impact on society, on the environment and its economic impact is as completely and transparently as it can. However, remember what you know about people's incentives. Do we have incentives to do that? What do we usually see organisations doing? We usually see organisations reporting things that make them look good. And if they can avoid something, avoid reporting something that makes them look bad, they probably will. 
So there's no framework that says, here is what you have to have in your triple bottom line. Now the Global Reporting Initiative is attempting to develop a coherent framework for that, but until that has legal sanction, until there are legal rules that say you must report this, this and this, organisations can choose to subscribe or not subscribe to the principles that the Global Reporting Initiative is enunciating. enunciating. So, you know, it's really hard to set a consistent set of reporting requirements. Do we ask every organisation to tell us uh, how much funds it gave to hospitals in Equatorial Guinea? Well, for many organisations the answer is going to be no because they don't operate in Equatorial Guinea. How specific do you get? How do you set rules for activities that can be extremely diverse? So, there is a variety in the approach to disclosing social and environmental effects, and there are a number of ways of approaching it. You can take a checklist, of, a checklist approach. Here are a bunch of disclosures that you need to make. Have you made these disclosures? Right, so are the disclosures there or not? Alternatively, you can be a little bit more specific and say, here are our environmental targets. For example, an organisation might say, we do not intend to admit to emit more than five kilos of carbon per given production process. Have we met that target? Um, so we could report against environmental targets. Another way of dealing with triple bottom line is sort of a diagrammatic approach where you show the inputs and the outputs in terms of raw materials, wastage, products, value, other emissions. So these are different ways of reporting social and environmental aspects. But remember, none of these link in with our financial reports. Unless there is a distinct, clear cost or benefit, the financial reports are not going to be showing up triple bottom line. They're not going to be showing up the social and environmental parts of triple bottom line. So where's sustainability now? Realistically, with a lack of regulation, sustainability reporting is, is voluntary. It's free market. Now, do you think that unregulated reporting will generate meaningful, comparable information? Um, if you're interested in that question, have a look at George Akerlof's article uh, from way back in 1970 on the market for lemons. Akerlof basically looked at people who were selling used cars. Now, we know there are good used cars out there, there are bad ones, and bad ones are colloquially referred to as lemons. If you don't tell people about the quality of your car, what are they going to assume? they're going to assume there's a perhaps 50-50 chance of it being a bad car, a lemon, dodgy. So they will set a price that they're willing to pay based on the probability of it being a bad car. Now think of the optimal response of people who don't have lemons, people who have good cars. Rather than taking the average price, they will get a mechanics report to say, hey, our car's good. What about those people who have bad cars, have lemons? Well, they won't get the report because that will prove the car is bad. But will people assume those cars are 50 50 percent bad, the probability bad? No, they won't. Because the good guys, or some of the good guys, have got reports. So we know that people who aren't getting reports are going to be more likely to be bad. Maybe some of them are good cars, it's just not worth getting a report for them. But we know that people who don't report are more likely to have bad news or not have good news to tell us. So what do we expect from Akerlof's article? That only people with good, with good, with good news will, expect, will be expected to report that. People with bad news will just say nothing. So what does that mean for sustainability? It probably means until there are rules, until there are standards or other forms of institutional backing, sustainability reporting is just going to be a form of marketing or spin. So what do we need to take away? Well, we know that sustainability is about operating in such a way that we can, that we do not impair our resources. In other words, we maintain our ability to operate into the future. What do we know about the dimensions of sustainability? Well, they come back to the, the dimensions of the triple bottom line. There are three dimensions. Social, environmental, and economic. 